Hi everybody, uh, my name's Sean and I'm a lecturer in computer science at Swansea University. Now my background actually is in simulation, so I did my PhD in fluid simulations, you can see a couple of examples here, and optimization where I kind of looked, investigated techniques for um, taking wings and designing them. Now I moved to computer science and since then I've actually started an indie game studio outside of work, um, so it's a very like there's only two of us, so I'd barely call it a studio. Um, but we've made a bunch of games. Um, one of them got nominated for a Welsh BAFTA. You can see us there wearing suits that cost more than the game actually made. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it. I've been doing it for quite a while. Now, before all that, I was actually a school teacher, um, a physics school teacher in secondary school. And I still try and do a lot of work with school kids as much as I can. Um, but as you can imagine, with all those three things put together, I often get asked by other academics, would I be interested in working with them to make an educational game? Now, this is how I met Yamni. Now, through an organization called Cherish DE, whose office happened to be opposite mine at the time that this all happened, um, Yamni got in contact with them. They got in contact with me and said, oh, um, Yam Yamni has contacted us. She's interested in making a game. Would you be interested? I said no, because uh, I often don't have time to do this kind of thing. But I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll chat with Yamni. Now, Yamni's research is in something called medicinal maggots. Now, this it turns out this is absolutely a thing, um, and not just anything. It's a very effective thing, and you can get these um, on the NHS in the UK. And basically, maggots um, are very effective at cleaning bacteria in wounds, um, much more effective, actually, than antibiotics. Unfortunately, there's real resistance um, to using maggots. People find it, get quite squeamish about it. Um, and often it takes them, it, they won't accept maggot treatment until they're in quite extreme pain. Even doctors and nurses are slightly resistant to the idea of maggots. Now, what Yamni found was that this resistance, this um, kind of squeamishness, isn't something we're born with, it's actually something we develop over time. And she's done lots of work and survey with kids that shows that it's something they learn um, at a certain age, I can't quite remember. Um, so her strategy has been, well, if I can get to children before they get squeamish, then maybe they will not develop it and even better, convince their parents to accept this kind of treatment if they ever need to. Now she noticed that her kids were constantly playing games like Fortnite and she wanted to make a game that would be to do with maggot therapy and that they would spend lots of time on this game and learn that maggots were kind of not so bad. Um, and so even though originally I said I wasn't going to help, while she was explaining this, I had the idea for a game. My idea kind of came from kind of bubble bubble or osmos, osmos kind of style games where you have a bunch of different colored, and so this is the game I designed, where you have different colored bacteria and to treat the bacteria or the patient, you fire antibiotics matching the color to those bacteria. Now also, as time goes on, those bacteria divide, and if bacteria of the same color touch each other, they grow and eventually create bacterial wall. Now bacterial wall is something that happens in real life, and when, that, when you get that kind of infection that you end up getting that kind of wall, like antibiotics cannot help you, and the only thing that can help you there would be maggot therapy. So in the game, the only thing that can treat bacterial wall are the maggots, which you can see they're kind of starting to work. And the maggots can also treat any bacteria of any color. Now you don't get to use maggots right away, because much like in real life, you have to convince the patient that they're a good idea. And we have this metric based on kind of the current state of health of the patient and how much time you have spent talking to them rather than just trying to treat them with antibiotics. And once you get over this threshold, the patient says it's okay and you can use maggots. Now there's a bit of a problem that the maggot unit in the game is massively overpowered. The maggot can eat all the different colored bacterias, it can eat the bacterial wall, and it can move. Um, and me as a game designer, as soon as I kind of saw that as a problem, and I, I thought, oh, well, this clearly this is like the most powerful thing in the game you're going to want to use it so i was trying to think how do i balance against that and i came up with all these different ideas of maybe i limit the number of maggots you use um well the idea of even talking to the patient kind of came from that 
trying to balance it somehow so you wouldn't just straight away use it. Um, and we, we spent a long time trying to figure out how we could balance it um, so it wasn't overpowered. But when we did play testing with kids, we'd found something kind of we thought was interesting is that they would experiment and very quickly learn that they needed to use the maggot to win and that that was the only way to win maybe they could do the first there's a there's a bunch of levels in the game and the first few are quite easy just to kind of teach in the mechanics but eventually they kind of realized that right okay well i just need to do nothing but start the game convince the patient to let me use maggots and then just use maggots and don't bother with the antibiotics so we set out with this idea of making a game that people would spend lots of time with but we ended up creating something different because once the player or the kid or whoever's playing the game has figured out that maggots are the way well they can win every time they don't need to play the game again and so that wasn't exactly what we aim to do but when we eventually kind of accepted this, we realized that actually that's really useful in a bunch of situations. So, for example, Yamni runs a lot of um, exhibits. So it's perfect for setting up a laptop or an iPad at one of these exhibits. Someone can come play the game for 20 minutes and get the idea. It's also really good in the classroom when there's limited time. So you can have this as part of an activity of maybe a whole hour lesson on maggot therapy where the kids can play it within 20 minutes they figured out that key idea that you it's better to start treating with maggots early on but you're going to need to convince the patient first and that's how we made a game that's kind of from a game design point of view broken but it proves a point about medicinal maggots um, and we were really lucky to get some funding for this so cherish de and the european regional development fund through the circumry program with welsh government funded this work um but thanks for listening.